Billy Edwards proved everybody wrong against UConn. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by 5-Hour Energy. Go to 5hourenergy.com and use promo code LOCKEDONCFB to receive 20% off your first offer. This offer is only valid until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with any other promotions. The code is not good on subscription order, so go to 5hourenergy.com today. Maryland football gets a huge win over UConn. Every game we play, I think, is a big win. But my main takeaway is that Billy Edwards proved me wrong, proved a lot of people wrong, pulled a lot of doubters wrong. He looked really good Saturday afternoon against UConn as the Terps pick up a huge win. I know you guys are glad that we finally can actually talk about actual football games. We don't have to talk about off season and some of these other things. We can talk about real football game. And what I saw from Billy Edwards, we have to get into. That's what we have to start with today because he absolutely proved me wrong. And I think he looked really good. And I think he proved a lot of people wrong. And to me, Billy Edwards coming into the season, I just wasn't sure about it. I wasn't convinced what I had seen, what I had kind of heard about him in camp and everything. I didn't I, I didn't feel good about it. I was like, okay, why bring in MJ Morse if you really believe that Billy Edwards is your guy? I just didn't quite understand it. But what I saw from him on Saturday was a guy that has improved, a guy that's gotten better, a guy that's worked on his game, and a guy that's ready to take a – a next step to prove everybody wrong. If you guys forget before the season started, they ranked this guy the second worst quarterback going into the year. Second worst quarterback in the Big Ten going into the year. And there was names above him that weren't that good. Guys that hadn't proven themselves. Guys that were in a similar spot as him. And they ranked him as the second worst quarterback. And some of it was Billy hadn't played. We hadn't seen a lot. We didn't really know. But I'll tell you that he's made improvements in his arm in the passing game. He always had a powerful arm, but he was making throws out there that was like, whoa, I- I'd never seen him make that type of throw. Whoa, that- that's a big time throw. Whoa, that's a laser. Whoa, that's a really good read. And he was accurate with the football. My biggest concern with Billy Edwards before this game was I didn't feel like he was the most accurate. I didn't feel like as a passer, he was our best option. But in the game against UConn, he looked like our best option in terms of as a passing quarterback. Um, He went 20 for 27 for 74% completion. That's big time. 74% completion percentage. I don't care who you're playing. That's a good number to hit for Billy Edwards. 70% completion. If he's if he's in there, we're, we're going to be really good this season. 70% completion. You couldn't tell me that going into the year. He was going to have a 70% completion. And then remember, um, you remember in the Music City Bowl game, even when he won the MVP of that, I wasn't convinced because I was like, okay, he he played well. He did a couple things, but a lot of his stats came from a screen pass to Roman Hamby. It was a lot of the running games. He went for like 6 to 20 in that game. I was like, he has to be more accurate. He has to be more consistent as a thrower. And I saw a guy that can make throws and not just like, oh, he's checking it down. And, oh, he's he's just kind of feeding it there. And he's kind of just playing a check down type of game. No, I see a guy that's throwing lasers like over the field. And, and then as well as if he needs to check it down, he was checking it down. And, and Coach Locks had a really good game plan um, going into this UConn game. I don't think people realize, like, this was a 20-point spread, which I said I thought the Terps would cover, and I ended up being right about that. Um, but I, I, it was a 20-point spread. It wasn't supposed to be like, oh, yeah, we walk out there and just absolutely demolish them. Like, I had people in our comments saying he's going to surprise a lot of different people this year. So it was a 20 point spread and Billy Anders looked really good while doing it. I know you guys know a couple of throws that I'm talking about. Like he had one over the middle to Ty Felton. I think it was, was an absolute laser. Like it was a tight window throw. And I was like, wait, 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 hold up. 
This wasn't what I was seeing with Billy Edwards. This isn't what I thought he brought to the table. I didn't think he could make these high level throws. Like he was making some NFL types of throws. Like I was like, oh, that that's a big time throw. Whoa, that that's a huge throw. Oh wow, over the middle of the tie. Oh, that's a really good throw to Dylan Wade. Like he made multiple throws while containing that seventy four percent completion with an average of eleven point five. That'll work. And he ended up with a rating of 195. And you can't forget, he had two touchdown passes. And so I think I was completely wrong about Billy Edwards. I do have to say this. I have to say quick caveat. It was against UConn. So I can't get too overexcited. I can't jump the bone on it. I know I'm kind of doing that a little bit. But I, I want to see it again. I want to see it again for Billy Edwards. I want to see if he can do it again. And if he can do it again against Michigan State next week, then I'll be say it again that he I was completely wrong about him and he can be one of the better players in the Big Ten when it's all said and done and he can do some special things in the Big Ten. And that's not even with us talking about his rushing game. I almost completely forgot, almost left it out. That's the thing about Billy Edwards. That's why we love him as our quarterback. He brings a different dimension. that The other guys in that room, just don't quite bring MJ Morris. Honestly, like MJ Morris, um, I, I I could kind of understand why Billy was definitely the starter. I thought it was gonna be MJ Morris, but I when I saw it in person, I was like, okay, Billy's moving better. He definitely has a better grasp of the offense. And we know Cameron Edge can't move like Billy Edwards. Like Billy Edwards is an elite runner of the football for the turf. Like he's one of the best runners of the football in the Big Ten in terms of the quarterback play. And last year. We would put him in spots to just run the football, just to run the quarterback run game, whether it's a fourth and one or on the goal line. And now he's our starting quarterback. And when he's making these big time throws to pray through and tie on the outside, while he's also including the run game, that's when we can get, that's when I'm like, okay, this guy has the tools to be really good. Like I never doubted that he had the tools. I just hadn't seen the consistency. Like when you look at it, five carries for 39 yards with a 7.8 average. And that was against UConn. So I, I was talking about the game a little bit with my dad. And I was like, yeah, it's against UConn. They're running him a little bit, a little bit more than I would want them to. But against next week against Michigan State, they're definitely going to run him a lot more. And it's going to be a, a lot more that quarterback run game, I bet, in the game plan. And that's really hard to game plan for a guy that can bail out with his legs. And I, I, we already knew that was part of his game, but he solidified that and showed that that's a huge part of his game. And he's going to continue to do that at a really high level. So I was looking at the passing game, the passing completion percentage, the accuracy, and then while making big time throws, like he put up an elite, uh, he put up an elite type of performance. And I'll be the first one to tell you guys that I was wrong about Billy Edwards. I was wrong. He's definitely the guy in the quarterback room. And I think he can lead us to a special place. Like I said, it was against UConn, so let's not get too ahead of ourselves. But I feel pretty good about what he has the opportunity to do. I, I think I think he has a chance to be a special type of player for the Maryland football program. And I and I know we lost to Leah, and you're probably looking at Billy as a completely different guy. Billy, as in terms of traits and what he can do as a player, believe it or not, has a higher ceiling than Talia. He has a stronger arm. He can do more with his legs. He's bigger. He can do more. He's more. He has more traits. He's not, He's more. He's got more talent technically than Talia. Will he put it together like that? Hmm, time will probably tell. I'll probably say probably not. But what I saw against UConn was a really good start and a guy that looked like he had studied and he was ready for that moment. And you can tell. The team rallies around him. Like, I don't know if you guys – how um, you guys were um watching the game. And if you were watching, like, they love Billy. Like, they know how hard he's worked to get there. Um, and he's waited his turn. And, and you can't hate on him for that. And if you saw in the UConn game, they love him. They're rallying. They're rallying behind him, excuse me. And as a quarterback, you got to have a guy that is able to do that. And I thought that Billy Edwards was really doing that for the Terps. And that was really cool. Now, next week against Michigan State, that's a different test. That's going to be a whole different level. And no, Michigan State's no Alabama or Georgia this year. But when you're playing a Big Ten opponent, um, opponent the caliber of Michigan State still, that's going to be a different type of dog. So we'll see. It's at home. Hopefully that um, the crowd shows out for that game next week about um, at 3.30. We'll talk about more about that later on in the week. But 
all I'm saying is that's a different beast. I could have been completely wrong about this Maryland team, to be completely honest. The offense, I think, has the tools to be one of the best in the Big Ten after what I watched against UConn. I'll tell you about that after this ad from 5-Hour Energy. Tired after lunch, you're not alone. In fact, research shows that more than 70% of us hit the wall after lunch. Let 5-Hour Energy Shop help you leap over that wall instead of crashing into it. Want to get into shape but you're having trouble staying motivated? Make 5-Hour Energy Shots part of your lifestyle and get the energy boost you need to get fit. We all know you sometimes do not want to go to the gym. Take a 5-Hour Energy Shot to give you the feelings and alertness you can get to the gym. With zero sugar and a convenient portable size, it's a perfect pick-me-up and getting stuff done. The 5-Hour Energy website has flavors galore like watermelon, tropical burst, grape, berry, and more. And there's a flavor for everyone. Try them all. On the site, you even get an option to build your own 12-pack or 24-pack. You choose the flavors, and it's delivered right to your door. If you go to 5hourenergy.com, that is the number 5hourenergy.com, and get some 5-Hour Energy product today, you can use promo code LOCKEDONCFB to receive 20% off your order. This offer is only valid until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with any other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders. So go to 5hourenergy.com today. So I think going into this season, I think a lot of us thought that Maryland's identity was going to be defense or running the football. But the Terps have the tools to expand that identity and do some different things that Maybe we didn't even expect them to be able to do on the offensive side of things. I know that everyone expected us to take a step back, and I know it was just against UConn, but putting up 50 points against UConn is no slight. Like The over-under for the game was what? It was like 45, and so we, we went over that on our own, completely on our own. And so what I saw us do offensively against UConn was really cool in terms of our weapons, in terms of the quarterback play, which I just talked about, in terms of the running the running plays and everything, I thought it all came together and looked pretty solid. Is there spots to get better? Yeah, there's plenty to get better at. There's plenty of things that we need to continue to improve on. But I thought it looked like a really solid um, a really solid performance against UConn offensively. And my reason of saying this, that we can take another step offensively, the biggest reason is Billy Edwards. But that's not the only reason. We just talked about Billy. He provides a really high ceiling what we're able to do in terms of rushing the football in terms of if I just if what I saw against UConn he's going to do passing the football consistently it's a really high ceiling of what he's going to be able to maximize with the Terps offense but think about it Billy Edwards as a runner of the football makes it a lot easier for Roman Hemby and Nolan Ray and Colby McDonald to get going with Talia, it was a little bit harder because he's not as much as the running quarterback. But whenever you put a running quarterback in there, they have to respect the option. They have to respect the quarterback in terms of runner. So it makes it a lot easier on everybody else. And I think you know what Roman Hemby can do as running back. You know he's going to be a really good player. He had 14 carries for 66 yards with a 4.7 average. He, he looked pretty solid. Um, nothing special. I thought he, he just looked, he looked pretty decent like Roman Hemby usually does. But – Another reason I think the offense is going to take another uh, step up, continuing in that running room, Nolan Ray. I told you guys, I kept saying it. I was like, Nolan Ray, I keep hearing his names. The coaches keep bringing it up. This is a guy they keep talking about. I don't know exactly what's going on with Nolan Ray, but I saw him in the spring game. I was like, this kid's got a different gear. I didn't see him last year's freshman. He didn't play. Um, he redshirted, and now I'm seeing this guy, and I'm like, shoot. He, he was seeing it in a real game, not just a spring game. Um, not just hearing reports. Nolan Ray has a different gear. And I'm not saying that Roman Hemby's job is in danger, but that's going to be a really good one-two punch. And to me, Colby McDonald's good, but he just can't bring athletically what Nolan Ray can bring. In terms of, did you see Nolan Ray cut? I was like, that's not normal. Like you, you, you don't get guys that are that explosive can cut like that or that type of athletes. Like that's not your normal type of running back. Like that's not that's not just a casual type of thing. Like in terms of they said it, he's probably the fastest guy on the team. Ty Felton likes to think it's him, I think, but everyone said it's probably Nolan Ray, and so he is another reason why I think the offense could take a huge step. 
into a different atmosphere that we didn't see coming. It could be close to what we've been in the past with Talia. It could be a little bit different still. It might be more run-centric. It might be less pass. It might be more giving it to Nolan and Roman Hemby a lot. But what we can do as an offense, I think, is going to be really exciting and really cool in terms of Billy as runner and then adding Nolan Ray. And it, it's I'll be completely honest. I don't like to lie to you guys. You guys might see it as negative. It's a breath of fresh air having running back two that can take a carry 50 yards to the house. Antoine Littleton couldn't do it. And I know he was short yardage, like a bigger guy, and he had a different type of game. But it's a breath of fresh air when Roman Kemby comes out. We have a guy that can take it for 48 yards. And I don't know if you guys remember, I said, I don't know if you guys were listening, one of my bold predictions going into the UConn game was that Nolan Ray was going to have a run above 30 yards. As soon as that happened, I was trying to find the clip, um, but I ended up, I don't know, I ended up not doing it. I was trying to find the clip of me saying that, but, I told you, he's going to get a rush for over 30 yards against UConn, and that's what he did. He had that 40-yard rush, where a uh, 48-yard rush, almost 50 yards, in one play where he looked really good. He averaged 10 yards per carry. He had a touchdown, and he only got six carries. I expect that to go up. So he brings a different dimension, and that's without me talking about the receiving core. And let me tell you, man, Ty Felton is coming. He is coming for all Big Ten, first team, second team, all Big Ten, whatever it may be, most underrated receiver in the Big Ten. Ty Felton looks elite. He is NFL bound if he continues to play like this. Like I said, it's against UConn, so we got to calm down. We can't get too ahead of ourselves. But seven receptions, 178 yards, two touchdowns, Ty Felton looks good. And the important thing is I was concerned. I was like, does Billy Edwards have a connection with those receivers? Like, is he? Is it, how's that going to go? And he proved that, yeah, he's got a connection with those receivers. Those guys look good. He feels good about those um, guys at the receiver position. So I feel good about Ty Felton and, and what he can, what he is and his connection with Billy Edwards and Caden Prather also had a solid game, second on the team receiving six receptions for 60 yards. So our two leading receivers looked good. And Dylan Wade, another guy I told you would bring a different dimension. Preston Howard didn't play very much. It was like eight snaps. He had some type of injury, but Dylan Wade stepped in like we expect him to. Two receptions for 38 yards. It's really all we need – I saw the freshman Ryan Manning get a couple of catches. Like, we have the guys to have a really good offense. Octavian Smith had a really nice catch. I really like this offense. I think that with Ty, with Billy playing right, Caden Prather, Nolan, Hemby, the only thing that I think holds us back is the offensive line play. If the offensive line plays good, we win a lot of games. If the offensive line plays decent – we still win a lot of games. So I feel really good about the Terps offensively, and I think it's going to be a lot better than what I thought. I don't know exactly what you guys think. I know I'm known as a pessimistic. But I just like to tell the truth. But I think the offense has a chance to be really, really solid for the Terps this coming year. And I, and I think it's going to be up to the line. If Billy Edwards keeps playing like this, the running game is going to be good. We have receivers. The line plays well. The sky's really the limit, and the Terps could have a season that really nobody expected. Who are my offensive and defensive and overall MVPs for the game? I'll tell you about that after this ad from Ultimate College Football GM. Hey, Locked On Terps fans, I want to take a moment to give you a heads up on a brand new mobile game that I think you're going to love as much as I do. Ultimate College Football Head Coach. In this amazing game and simulations, you get to step into the shoes of a head coach and lead your college football program to glory. Can you imagine actually being the head coach of the Maryland Terrapins from recruiting players and hiring coaching staff to overseeing training camps and handling school scholarships? You control every crucial detail of your program. It's all in your hands. Will you be able to handle the pressure? And here's what I really love about the game. You're responsible for calling offensive plays during the games. Your strategy will not only determine the success of your football season, but will shape the future and legacy of your program. All, Ultimate College Football Head Coach is completely free and has no ads. It is 100% playable offline. You can play on the go as you want, when you want to. And, of course, we have a special offer for you Locked on Terps fans. Use the promo code Locked on CFB, all caps inside the game store, to receive a free boost to your program. Make sure to take advantage of this perk as it will get your team off to a strong start. Down the game, just visit ultimate-collegefootball.com or look it up on the App Store. Ultimate College Football Head Coach, begin your coaching legacy today.
So offensive and defensive MVPs and an overall MVP. I'm doing it a little bit differently just to give out more awards this year. But let me know who you guys think is the offensive, defensive, and overall MVP. Overall MVP, honestly, was easy for me. It was Billy Edwards. He looked awesome. Yeah, I feel like every segment I've talked about him a ton. But he's a quarterback. And I, going into the season, I just didn't feel great about it. But for him to put up the stat line that he did and look as confident as he did, he looked like a guy that was like, yeah, I've put in the work. I've watched the film. I've done everything I needed to do. I'm just going to go out there, let it rip, run around, and play. 74% completion percentage, 311 yards, 20 to 27, had a 75-yard pass, two touchdowns, and a rating of 195.3. He looked really good. He looked really good. He looked elite, honestly. So to me, he's the overall MVP. He's the leader of our football team. And going into the game, Let's not forget, there was a quarterback battle. We didn't know who it was, and I didn't think it was going to be Billy. Nobody really knew. I guess it kind of – Billy Edwards was building a lot of momentum. People thought it would be Billy. But for him to, like, handle that and go in and with all that – the kind of adversity in the back show of everyone being like, oh, who's the quarterback, blah, 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 and Coach Loxley bringing in MJ Morris and having all these different people talk about MJ Morris and all these different things, and for Billy Edwards to come in and perform – that matters. That counts. And that's part of the reason I choose him for overall MVP for this game because of all the talk, bringing in a different quarterback, bringing in a different guy, and then playing that well, 300-yard passing game, getting in the rushing stats, doing everything you need, leading the team. That's a good game. That's an overall MVP to me. And I thought he was the best player on the field yesterday, arguably. And that brings me to my next player. Ty Felton is your offensive MVP. I think it was pretty obvious. I didn't want to just do offensive and defensive MVP because it was like someone was going to get cut out that shouldn't have gotten cut out. And so Ty Felton, man, seven receptions for 178 yards, averaging 25.4 yards a catch with a long of 75, two touchdowns. Looks like one of the best receivers in the Big Ten, is one of the best receivers in the Big Ten. And we've been knowing this about Ty. He's going to have the chance to be – on all Big Ten, I think, why can't he be first team? Why not? And a lot of people are going to say, oh, because those guys at Ohio State are, oh, those guys at Oregon. But who cares? If he does it statistically, then he can be really good. I'll say this. That guy at Ohio State, that freshman, Jeremiah Smith, looks different. I'll be completely honest. That guy looks like a different breed. Like he, I'm like, is this this guy might be their best player already. He he, he looked elite. He, he looks like just a different, like, I don't know where they made that guy. But Ty Fellon has a chance to be first team all Big Ten. And for him to have seven receptions, 170 yards, that's a pretty special game for Ty Fellon. By far our leading receiver on the game. And I thought did a really good job overall. Um, he, he definitely looked pretty good for the Terps. My defensive MVP, you could go two players. Glendon Miller looked really good, like I'm expecting him to. Had an interception. I thought looked really solid, had five tackles. I thought Dante looked really good as well to pass deflection. But my other option, um, it was Ruben Hippolyte with that um, interception that he had. was really cool. Um, it, it was like one of the crazier interceptions you'll probably see a Maryland player have. Um, it, it, it was it was definitely a cool interception, but I'd probably go with uh, Glendon Miller just because he had tackles and he had the pick, even though Ruben Hippolyte had the pick. He didn't have as many of the other uh, tackles and overall plays, but um, against Michigan State, I expect him to do a lot of different things. So those are my three MVPs for the Terps, Glendon, Billy, and Ty Felton. And before the game, I probably could have told you it would go something like that. Um, maybe not Billy because we just didn't know who the starter was going to be, but Glendon Miller is one of our best defenders. Ty Felton could be our best player on the team. I'm telling you, Ty Felton looks like different. The way the Terps have developed him, the way Coach Locks has done with Ty Felton, every year has just gotten better and better and better. And I'm, I, I want to see what he does against a Big Ten type of team in his senior year against Michigan State. He looks really good. The receiving core looks good. Billy looks good. Those are the three MVPs. Those were, I thought, the best performances. Let me know what you guys think. There's always a couple of guys. It was cool to see some of the younger guys play. I'm just glad that Maryland won. And for us to cover 20-point spread by 43 points is a really good start to the year. So I think the Terps did a really good job. Um, and, and we'll see what happens 
Um, but tomorrow we'll be back. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. We got a new setup um, in here. and Let me know what you guys think and if I should add anything. Um, but, yeah, thank you guys for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. Um, but I'll see you guys tomorrow.